I got a message from Marika who wrote, Hi Paul, thanks for all your videos. I always have issues with audio buttons, and I'm a language teacher, so I use them frequently. When I set up an audio button on a multiple choice question like the one in the video that she's commenting on, she unchecks the continue movie at the end of audio box. The issue that she's experiencing is that when you go to click the submit button and it prompts you to click anywhere or click Y to continue, it actually doesn't continue. The slide doesn't advance. Any thoughts? Well, I think the best way to address this, I'm not entirely sure exactly what situation you're experiencing, um, but you know, for, this, for your sake and for the sake of all the other viewers, I'll take you through some of my best practices when working with audio or multiple audio clips on a single slide here. So here's an example of a multiple choice question that I've created that's music related. And to, uh, to make it uh, an example that uses a music clip, what I'm asking users is to identify the style of music that's going to play when they press this play music clip icon or this button. It's just a smart shape and I'm going to use it as a button. There's a couple things I'm going to need to do first of all. Uh, what I like to do with my quiz questions, multiple choice or otherwise, is rather than to have them continue on success and failure, I prefer to actually go to next slide immediately. And the reason for that is that if you've added any narration to this slide, uh, it's going to pause, let's say, one and a half seconds into the slide, and then you'll have to wait for the uh, slide to advance to the next slide. This way it will jump right away, and that's uh, all I need to do there. I can shuffle the answers as well. You know, the usual things that you do to customize your quiz questions. So the first thing let's do uh, is record that narration. Start recording. I'm just going to position the slide audio window so I can still read what the narration should be. Click the play music clip button and answer the following question. What style of music is represented in the music clip on this slide? Okay, so we have our clip there. I'll hit save. We'll extend the length of the slide and we'll hit close. And of course that brings, that draws my attention to the fact that my music clip button is only appearing on the slide for a specific time. And in fact, what I want to do is extend it to the end of the slide. So control E uh, will make it uh, visible for rest of slide. So that's uh, that takes care of that. I'm just going to adjust the audio. Just make sure there's a little space on either side there. And we'll select the play music clip button. And what we're going to do is we're going to check off use as a button because it's actually just a smart shape right now. And we're going to go to the Actions tab. And you might think that I'm going to play the audio directly from the on, uh, on Success action here. But in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to execute Advanced Actions. And there's a reason for this. Um, if you create uh, an Advanced Action for this, you can add additional commands that could be helpful to you. So I'm going to call this play audio and the additional command we're going to run is we're going to stop triggered audio and the reason you might want to do this it's not really applicable in this example but let's say I had four buttons on this slide instead of just the one and each one would play a different audio track uh, the stop triggered audio would stop any previously played music from continuing before playing the next audio that you're going to play. And the advantage, of course, is that this will prevent a cacophony of sound coming through the user's speakers and only play one audio file at a time. So now that we've stopped any previously triggered audio, now we'll play the audio. And I've already imported this audio file into my library, so I can select it from here. If I hadn't, I could simply import it using this button here. I will select that. 
We'll save this as an action. Click OK. Click Close. And we're pretty much go good to go here. I personally like to uh, turn on the hand cursor and disable the click sound. That's just a personal preference. One last thing that, I, that you should do as well, because similar to the triggered audio, we want to stop any slide audio, like that narration that I just recorded. So going to the Options tab, again, we've got the, uh, the, the Play Music Clip uh, button that uh, is actually a smart shape being used as a button. With that selected, we just want to check off Stop Slide Audio, and it's going to give you the choice when clicked or when paused. Uh, stick with when clicked because that's what we're looking for here. And what we also want to do is uh, get rid of any pauses on this button as well from your timing panel um, because we don't want it to continue playing the project from this point. In fact, we don't want this button to affect the timeline at all. Uh, and so that should, that should work well at this point here. Uh, one thing I forgot to double check, of course, is anytime you create a new advanced action when you have existing advanced actions, make sure that your uh, script drop down window is pointing at the correct advanced action. And we'll do that just now. So now I think we're good to go here. So let's preview the next five slides and see if this works well. What I'm going to do is allow the narration to partly play. And I'm going to attempt to interrupt it by pressing my play music clip uh, button partway through. Click the play music clip button and answer the following question. What style of... So as you can see there, it worked exactly as predicted. When I pressed my play music clip button, it interrupted the narration, stopping it from continuing to play, and then it played the sample of reggae music. And of course, then I was free to select the correct answer, click submit, and then click anywhere or press Y to continue. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help building your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at paulwilsonlearning.com. Follow me on Twitter at paulwilsonld. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.